Good morning, everybody. Happy Monday. We have an amazing show for everybody today. What do we have, Crystal? Indeed, we do. Hope everybody had a fabulous weekend. Um, we've got J.D. Scholten. He is a congressional candidate in rural Iowa running against Steve King. But he has really been speaking out about what's going on at these meat processing plants and in rural America in general. So we're going to speak with him. We also have Juanita Broderick. Of course, she accused uh, Bill Clinton of rape. She was very much disbelieved and dismissed, especially by the liberal media. We're going to talk to her about what it has been like for her to watch the Tara Reid allegations unfold and if she sees any sort of echoes from what she experienced. Um, and let's start with the latest developments there, Sagar. Yeah, I mean, the latest developments on the Tara Reid case are kind of dizzying from a media perspective. Yes. Which starts really with the New York Times, who has the most genius idea. And this really is a split the difference so idea from the New York Times. They're like, whoa, well, they want to take a stand and say, we're going to, on behalf of survivors, investigate Tara Reid's allegations. Now, that seems like something a lot of people could get behind. Okay, then we go through and we see what do they actually propose. They propose that the DNC <laughs> should move to investigate the matter swiftly and thoroughly with the full cooperation of the Biden campaign. Now, that is a take so hot that it only took a few hours to burn out and into flame because <laughs> shortly thereafter, DNC chairman Tom Perez appeared on This Week with George Stephanopoulos, and guess what he had to say? Well, listen, there's been so many investigations of this, of the vice president. The most, the most um, comprehensive investigation of the vice president was when he was vetted by Barack Obama in 2008. I'm very familiar with vice presidential vetting process. They look at everything about you. They looked at the entire history of Joe Biden, his entire career. But, but why not the, just search uh, terror read in those documents? This is like the uh, Hillary emails because there was nothing there. Already been investigated. There it is. He's already been investigated. By the way, wasn't Brett Kavanaugh investigated six or seven times because we have FBI background checks? That wasn't enough for Tom Perez and for many of these national Democrats. Now the Obama, by the way, it wasn't even investigated by the FBI. It was all about the, uh, it was by the Obama vetting committee. And apparently that is good enough for Tom Perez. But like I said, the DN DNC chairman, Tom Perez, is already basically clearing and defending him on national television. Of so the Times wants to say that this man should be in part of an impartial investigation to investigate the claims against Joe Biden. Also, isn't it the media's job to investigate the claims? against powerful people because the whole idea was that they're independent from these political structures unless they're one and the same. Yes, yeah. indeed. No, I mean, it was a hilarious take from the start. Oh like, God. you know, calling for an investigation. Yes, let's have a, a nonpartisan, unbiased investigation <laughs> by that independent organization, the DNC. Yes, I'm sure, you know, my phone will be ringing off the hook to serve on that commission because yes. they'll be looking for independent voices, of course, Zagar. No, I mean, it's absurd. It's completely absurd. And now we're entering the phase of the media trying to figure out some way mm -hmm. so that they cannot be total blatant hypocrites on this issue. Right. And this is one of the tactics that they are employing here. I also want to speak to this issue of like, oh, he's already been vetted. So we already know everything there is to know about right. Joe Biden. Well, first of all, before the Me Too era, I don't even know that they were particularly looking for issues like that. This. Second of all, it's not like these vets are anything magical. How are you going to turn over every stone until the woman herself wants to come forward? Of course it didn't come up because Tara Reid didn't tell you about it. Mm -hmm. You didn't reach out to every staffer to ask them what happened, and they may not have shared with you everything that occurred during their tenure. So there's nothing magical about a vet. There was nothing magical about a vet. Democrats knew that when it involved Brett Kavanaugh, and there's still nothing magical about a vet. There needs to be actual journalism done to investigate these claims. And look, we should be comfortable with the fact that at the end of the day, we are never going to know exactly what happened. And you rarely will. I mean, in such rare instances, would you have like a yeah, videotape video, or right. odd or something like that where you could say 100 percent here is what happened. You have to look at the weight and the balance of the evidence yeah. to look at the fact that Tara, obviously, at this point, we know that she told people at the time that something happened to her that much. We know right from her mom and calling into Larry King Live, their brother, her friend, the neighbor, the work colleague, she clearly felt that something happened to her and shared that with people at the time. Did it go down exactly how she said? That could be called into question. We just don't know. But you have to balance the weight of the evidence and you have to treat these claims, as we've been saying, you have to treat them equally and fairly and impartially. Um, 
as has continued to occur, the women in particular who are being vetted to potentially be Joe Biden's nominee have been asked, I think rightfully so, about these allegations and how it gels with their own past speaking out on Believe Women and Me Too. Gretchen Whitmer was on with Jake Tapper over the weekend. And by the way, um, because of technical issues, the, the quality of this over on CNN was not great. But here's what Gretchen Whitmer had to say. You know, Jake, as a survivor and as a feminist, I'll say this. We need to give people an opportunity to tell their story. But then we have a duty to vet it. And just because you're a survivor doesn't mean that every claim is equal. It means we give them the ability to make their case and the other side as well, and then to make a judgment that is informed. I have read a lot about this current allegation. I know Joe Biden, and I've watched his defense, and there's not a pattern that goes into this. And I think that for these reasons, I'm very comfortable um, that, that Joe Biden is who he says he is. Oh, this makes me so mad. Because again, you go back to 2018. What did she say? She tweeted, we can go back and check the public record. I believe Christine Blasey Ford. She should believe. She should be believed. All of that. All of the same thing, by the way, applies to Brett Kavanaugh. It wasn't a good enough for them then, So it's, but it's good enough for them now. The blatant hypocrisy of this is just like, I believe Joe Biden. There's no pattern. Well, what was the line, Crystal, that was deleted originally from the New York Times story? There is no pattern beyond inappropriate kissing, kissing touching, hugging, touching. It's like, oh, uh, that's pretty. Like, I mean, I played the John well, Stewart watch clip the video. for all of you. 2015, it was an open secret. Everybody was just like, oh, yeah, it's just like Joe. He's weird and sniffs kids' hair whenever they're like <laughs> taking whenever they're taking photos with their parents. I don't know why. Nobody really knows why. He's got all those photos of the inappropriate hugging and all that. I mean, he claims he's going to stop since we are all in social distancing. Who knows? But. The real question is, why was it good enough for them then and not good enough and not good enough for them now? And I think that ultimately they're just being revealed as complete hypocrites. Stacey Abrams, Gretchen Whitmer, yeah. pretty much every person on the vice presidential list for Joe Biden's campaign has become a complete hypocrite on this. The only one who hasn't is Elizabeth Warren. And lo and behold, it's not because she hasn't been asked. It's because she's literally, as I understand it, turning down media appearances or is not is re, her office is refusing to investigate or uh, to respond to allegations about this claim. That's mm. what's happening. Is My friend Henry Rogers over the call has emailed her office over 15, 20 times. Wow. They refuse to respond. This is the Believe Woman Feminist Me Too candidate personified. Nothing, right? And actually, Tara told us on this show that she reached out to Elizabeth Warren's campaign and Kamala Harris's at the time. Kamala never replied, of course, and Elizabeth Warren sent her a form letter. Form letter. Yeah, indeed. And actually, Warren has a new op-ed out with Joe this morning, so she's happy to, I guess, still be associated with him even while she stonewalls on questions. Um, I think there's a piece, too, here of... Obviously, women know when they come forward that every past action is going to be scrutinized. And some of the stuff that has been said about Tara is just, I mean, it's outrageous. And look, we're media people. We expect to get yeah, crap right. all the time. Like, right. we get that. But if you're a regular person stepping in the spot, I mean, this is a really, really rough thing to go through. And that same level of scrutiny is never applied to the powerful man. I mean, look, we have a long record of Joe Biden being a fabulous outright lying. I mean, even in this campaign, making up a story about getting arrested, going to see Nelson Mandela. We have a record of, I mean, we can watch the video, as you point out, of him making women uncomfortable. I mean, that's the bottom line, overstepping boundaries repeatedly time and time again. How come that record is never talked about? It's just, yeah, oh, Joe Biden, there's no pattern of this here. I know Joe Biden. I believe Joe Biden. How come all of his past statements, actions, inconsistencies, consistencies, et cetera, are never weighed and laid out. While Tara, they feel free to rip her apart. Everything she's ever said, everything she's ever written, everything she's ever done is all any tiny inconsistency as she told her story, you know, oh, well, you said it was November and really it was December. I mean, right. all these things are considered fair game, but it's never the same on the side of the power. Yeah, I, mean, I think scrutiny is good. Like, I don't think it's a bad thing, but it's just about the lack of application to the other side, which is mm -hmm. what is maddening. And you see, we Gretchen Whitmer, I mean, at least Jake Tapper pressed her on, like, why did you believe Christine Blasey Ford and you don't yeah. believe Tara Reid? But not all of these Democratic politicians are getting are getting asked that. And look, we played it last uh, just on last week's show. Nancy Pelosi gets asked about that, and she's like, I don't need a lecture from you on Me Too. Like, I have four daughters. It's like, wait.
wait, that's enough? I mean, apparently that's, uh, they just continue to do this. I believe Joe, I know Joe. Joe Biden will, is you Joe can Biden. See, like I said, the DNC chairman, the person who the Times wants to investigate the claims Hilarious. is out there flacking for Biden himself. There's not gonna be any impartial fair process, or actually there could be, and it's called the media, but uh, like Pulitzer Prize winning outlets for Me Too reporting are calling on, the New York Times has won a prize for looking into Me Too on Harvey Weinstein, wants to offload its responsibility to the DNC. There's only one explanation. They don't want to be the ones to look into it because, you know, Tom Perez was more right than he said when he was like, this is just like Hillary's emails. It's exactly right. He says that it's a non-story. It's a real story that nobody refuses to talk about. Nobody refuses to really investigate. And then, look, this is what Ben Smith said. Whenever you, whenever credible media just lets these things go, then partisan media is going to have to step in. And you, right. don't want, you don't want that, right? Like, you don't want right and left-wing clickbait sites coming in in order to fill the gap. You want people to really investigate what's going on here. But if nobody's going to do it, then somebody's got to do it. Right. Well, and that's, look, we've talked about this yeah. with, with Katie Halper, who's always, yeah. obviously a friend of mine, friend of the show, and who was the first person to interview Tara, and then we put her on camera. And Katie was very reluctant to be the first it. person. I mean, she and, and Tara, they tried to reach out to mainstream journalists to get someone to investigate it. I mean, that's all. It wasn't like, let's have a puff piece. It was like, can you please vet and investigate this in a thorough way? No takers, yeah. right? Radio silence. And so then what do you do? You, you go with it, right? You do your best to vet it, to investigate it to the best of your ability, which Katie did actually an, an excellent job on. There's been nothing of major significance to come out to undercut Tara's story since she did her interview. She asked all the right questions with her. Um, but that's what you have to do. And if Katie hadn't moved forward, and if we hadn't done our interview, I don't think this ever would have been a story. There never, it would, never would have been brought to light until, oh, probably October, when Republicans would have dropped it on Joe Biden. Right. And then how would you feel to Democrats that this was sat on and nobody ever did anything with it. So yeah, into the void, if mainstream journalists don't step up, then yes, more partisan voices are going to fill in the gaps. And that's not on them. They're actually the ones who are being responsible in this case, bringing these allegations to light. That's on you for not ultimately doing your job from the beginning. Yeah, and that's what enables them, we'll talk about this later in the show, to be like, this is just partisan talking points. Well, it's like you made it a partisan talking point. You're the ones who made it so that Your only abdication partisan of doing your job exactly. Exactly. Is why. Is why partisans have to fill in the gap. So there we go. All right. All right we're going to tell you what's on our radars. That's next. 